And we're good in three, two, one. Okay, welcome inside a new thing that Brandon Thorne and myself, John Ledyard, are doing. Uh, that we're really excited about this. It's kind of like an under the microscope special edition. Under the microscope, obviously, being the name that uh, Brandon's been using for some really cool series he's had running on inside the pylon on offensive line play, breaking down individuals. He, this week, he looked at the Patriots' offensive line. There's great stuff, so check those out on inside the pylon. But today, we're actually going to look at it from both sides. So Brandon has a lot of history studying offensive line play, uh, works with LaCharles Bentley and, and some other um, – is with the Scouting Academy studying offensive linemen. He's been doing this for a long time now, and he's learned a ton about offensive line play. I've kind of done the same thing with a lot of defensive line play, and some of that overlaps by watching one side of the ball. We learn a lot about the other as well. So we thought it would be cool to kind of give you guys a look inside what we see when we watch tape. So we're going to look at six plays between a matchup between Green Bay Packers left tackle David Bakhtiari, uh, who is an exceptional player who we think is a little bit underrated probably right now, and I think the Packers just gave him big money, and Everson Griffin who is uh, the Vikings' extremely talented defensive end, who I still think is underrated, even though he's been in the league for quite a few years now and has put up great production during that time. Not a lot of people think of him when they think of the best pass rushers in the NFL. So we thought this would be a cool matchup to identify, and right away we're going to look at uh, a play between the two of them, and, we're gonna, and, and Brandon has some great points he wants to talk about with David Bakhtiari's stance and some of the unique uh, aspects of it. Yeah, so the first thing is, as we look at the film, and we just kind of play this clip a little bit, so if you look at his stance right here, it's just a really unique offensive lineman stance. I mean, there's probably really only one other guy that I can think of that gets in a stance with his back foot that far back and, you know, kind of his body hunched over that front side knee, and that's Joe Thomas. And um, I highlighted a little bit on Twitter, but it's just really interesting, you know, that another guy has a stance like Joe Thomas, who, you know, I thought, you know, prior to really watching Bakhtiari a lot that, you know, he had the only stance like that in the league. And um, I just, you know, I talked to Charles Bentley about it before and he, he made it pretty clear. He's like, yeah, Joe Thomas kind of defies all the, the rules of offensive line play just because the way he, he, he gets in his stance and comes out of it and whatnot. So um, he always, you know, said, you know, guys or players or whatever trying to mimic him it's probably not the smartest thing to do um just because you know it fits him but so that that right there kind of jumps out to me about this frame right here um with Bakhtiari and uh like you mentioned you know Everson Griffin um he's in a wide dine technique right now and um he's one of the most explosive dudes in the league and you know his speed to power um, is devastating. So you really got to worry about a lot of stuff when you're going against Everson Griffin, you know, both outside speed rushes and inside power rushes. So, um, so yeah, just a little bit of context here. And, um, I think where Bakhtiari's, Everson Griffin excels too is that he isn't resigned to one move as a pass rusher. So that really complicates your job as an offensive tackle because with Everson Griffin coming off the ball, you're not going to get speed rush, speed rush, speed rush, speed rush. You know, you're not going to get even a bull rush every time, even though it's a great move for him. He will spin, he will use his hands, he will cut the edge, and he's got enough bend to do it. He converts speed to power as well as any defensive end in the league. So there's just so much to be prepared for if you're an offensive tackle. So you can't risk oversetting. You also can't be slow out of your stance. So there's just a number of ways he can beat you. So you just really have to be on your A game and be thinking because the guy across from you, when it's Everson Griffin, he's one of the more thoughtful players one of the smarter players in the league at his position at taking whatever an offensive tackle gives him and he has the skill set to be able to do it yeah that's that's a really good point and just a, a little bit more context before we get going here the Packers are playing obviously right now in Minnesota and it's rocking so it's loud and I, I I try to point this out when you're watching offensive line play bear in mind you know when you're watching an offensive lineman um, at another team's field and if the the atmosphere is as electric as it was this night in Minnesota. Look at Bakhtiari's head. He has, he has to actually watch the ball to get out of his stance. He can't hear. So that right there puts him at a pretty significant dis disadvantage throughout this entire game um, of him having to turn his head inside and then come out of his stance and, you know, capture the defender with his eyes pretty much instantly. So that whole transition 
you know that that level of coordination is is pretty impressive um and we'll, we'll kind of see that here so you know let's just get this playing a little bit so yeah right away i mean he explodes out of his stance for being uh, i don't want to harp on this too much but for being the away team and to beat the defender out of the out of the gate like that is really impressive. I mean, he already is in a position right now to win because he's at his spot already, and Griffin's just coming out of his stance. So he's, you know, in a great position right and away. Griffin's no slouch off the ball. I mean, this guy is an incredible athlete at 275 pounds. His scores for the combine and then again at his pro day when he did extra exercises uh, that more than he did at the combine were off the charts for his size. I mean, he was in right. like the 90th percentile for his 40 in that 10 yard split went in along, right along with that. And so this is a guy who is a formidable athlete out of his stance. That's where he's consistently won that speed to power conversion. He's got both aspects of that. So. For back to you, I mean, you just played one little frame there. He was already in position. Look at him. I mean, he's he's ready to defend his landmark, and so it's an impressive first step against the guy who has an equally impressive first step. And like you said, the advantage of hearing snap count or knowing snap count is basically eliminated because he can't hear it. So you're basically just beating him off the ball. Right, right. And, you know, how a, how an offensive lineman starts is how he finishes nine times out of ten, you know, unless you're just a fantastic athlete and you can recover from bad, you know, starting points. But so, yeah, that explosive movement, that drive catch phase out of his stance to get into position is excellent. Um, so right away he limits Griffin's uh, options. You know, he, he really only has the option to try to run through him right now. Um, you know, he, he can't really get to the edge. He's just going to get, you know, turned and run past the quarterback so he's, he's gonna try to run through him and we'll see what happens you know three-step drop so you know Bakhtiari didn't really have to do a whole lot but he's in such great position here and we'll just kind of slow-mo it um he, he pretty much just halts him right at the point of attack yeah, there's that and little hop back, hop step back to get gone. set, which you're going to have against the guy as strong as Griffin. I mean, Griffin does a great job of getting leverage here. I mean, he that's one of the things he's best at. You know, 6'3", 275. Yep. He's not as tall as maybe really some good. DNs, but he's not short either. So he does a great job. You can see right there he's established leverage. He's stepping in. He's getting hands inside. He's working. He's working the only option he has, which is what we said, Griffin. He will take what you give him and what you give him as an option. Right. And he won't try and bang his head against the wall trying to get up the arc on a guy who gets out of his set that quickly. You know, he's going to take what's available to him. And what's available here is the bull rush. Like you said, it's, the ball's coming out quick. Um, you know, Griffin Ducks gets that leverage and gets up underneath him. But back to Yari's base is just really solid. Takes that one hop step back to set. And, and from that point on, he looks pretty strong in his anchor. Yeah, I mean, just if that was a five-step or, you know, if Rodgers didn't have that first read open or whatever, I mean, look at that pocket, you know, it's beautiful. I mean, Rodgers can escape right up here, or, mm -hmm. you know, kind of do what he wants. So that's that's a really nice kind of opening sequence uh, for, for uh, the Packers. And we talk a lot about how 1v1s in training camp and stuff are obviously slanted toward the defensive linemen because they have so much space to operate in uh, during those 1v1 matchups. You and I even talked about that at the Senior Bowl where you know, you're know you looking at offensive right. linemen, you're evaluating technique, but you know they're at a disadvantage with that much space. Well, Bakhtiari's on an island on so many of these plays. You know, there's He's one-on-one -on -one, uh, with this wide technique with tons of space inside for counter moves and obviously the space outside. You saw him real, with that real quick set. But yeah. look how much space there. I mean, look at that. I mean, mm -hmm. he's, on, he's on an island in a ton of space, almost like a 1v1 matchup in camp, and he's winning that completely against a premier pass rusher. You know, that's, that's great stuff. Definitely. It's, it's pretty impressive. Um, so this, that was the first drive of the game, um, just for a little more context. This is still the first drive of the game. Um, you know, they're still in the same area of the field. So again, you know, Griffin, he's in his typical wide nine stance, um, or alignment. And, uh, let's just kind of see what, what happens on this one. Again, really good get off, um, or get out of his stance uh, from Bakhtiari, you know, in pass protection, that's, you know, the three rules, you know, get out of your stance, create space, and um, obtain uh, half-man leverage on the defender, and all three are done right now. Yeah, so, you, can, uh, you can see yeah. the half-man right there. 
you can see that the separation he's gotten already from where he was in the stands to where he is now. And what's great about him is back to Yari is that by, by knowing you're facing a guy who will take whatever you give him, as soon as you can get out of your stance that quickly and eliminate some of the edge rush possibilities, you've limited what he can do to you. So now back to Yari, because of that footwork, because of his explosiveness, has taken away some options from Griffin, and he knows what to expect now from this point on. He knows he's going to see a lot of bull rush. He may see an inside counter, and he kind of knows to be ready for, for those uh, different approaches by uh, by Griffin. Right, and I think we're going to see some similar uh, play out here as well. Let's check it out. Yeah, really, really nice job. Griffin has a really nasty spin move, and um, – he put somebody on a poster with that spin move last year. I forget who it was. Do you remember? <laughs> somebody got no, I don't. by that spin move. <laughs> it was yeah, bad. it's it's pretty vicious, man. He's he's a powerful, explosive dude. So, I mean, you could see right here. The you pointed out uh, a little earlier when we were watching this. If you you can't really see it, but you can kind of get the idea that Bakhtiari's right hand is getting underneath Griffin's right armpit slash hip area and that's really kind of the key here because right here this is a pretty uncomfortable position for any offensive lineman to be in because you could see it's a vulnerable spot um his left arm kind of loses contact with him for a second there and he's leaning so that right hand positioning is key um, to protect that inside and right here you could see i mean he's just in great position and he really really does a nice job to, to halt that spin move. And it's really not an easy thing to do. So we can kind of watch it in fast motion again. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's really pretty. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it is not when you're on an Island like that and Griffin recognizes it, he knows he can't win that edge. So it's either bull rush or it's some type of an inside counter move. So he sells up field, which is what any good spin move starts with is that sell that speed rush right. up field, make them continue to turn their hips, continue to turn their hips. And here back to Ari is basically facing the sideline now at this point, which is exactly where Griffin wants him. And he knows he times it up perfectly. He's got the space available to him. He's got back to Ari in the right position. And this he's one of the best spin move defensive ends that there are. And yet back to Ari is able to do just enough. Like you said, that's a tough place to be in because that left hand is almost a little bit useless. You've got to stop a 275 pound man spinning that viciously inside with, with your right hand on that hip and armpit and he's able to do that and then and for a second there he's out he's leaning out uh, but he doesn't have to worry about you know getting beat with a swim or anything like that because his griffin's back to him so he can afford to lean out there find that leverage point he needs and that's mm -hmm. just really pretty the way he just stonewalls him there and then he resets his anchor sinks back and at that point rogers is you know looking at that point griffin kind of seems like it, he's his rush is Kinda lost. And it, yeah, there's not not a whole lot of options when you get caught in a spin move with your back to the quarterback that cleanly. You, you kind of run out of options pretty quick. Yeah, I mean that. You know, I think it all stems kind of from what we said. You know, if if you get out of your stance in a in a way where you create space and get that half man leverage, you just you limit the rusher's options, plain and simple. And you know that that's key. And you know, again, to do that in this atmosphere consistently against an elite you know rusher is is really impressive um so here we go this is a little bit later in the game i believe this is the second quarter um you know same type of alignment from griffin and uh here we're going to see a bull rush um from from griffin because again bakhtiari does uh, a nice job getting out of stance but we'll, we'll kind of play it and you know tell you what we see so here we go Yeah, so you see he, him lose his footing there, and uh, we, we kind of broke this down earlier. So um, Bakhtiari does a, a pretty good job here of getting out of his stance. Um, Griffin just goes straight to the bull rush, and Bakhtiari is going to do a series of hop steps back, um, hop, using a hop step technique to uh, kind of halt the momentum of the rusher. So kind of got one there, and he doesn't really get a third or a third one in, so kind of one there, another little one. And then right here, he just kind of tries to, you know, he thinks it's over, I guess. And he just tries to, you know, just halt him without really stepping back um, as deliberately as earlier. And he loses his footing right here. And 
Yeah, you can almost see his Griffin. one foot kind of slide on the ground once Griff once he he tries yeah. to like lock on an anchor there, and that's just not happening against Griffin. Once once a defender wins chest control that completely and has you going backwards, this is something I teach my offensive linemen, and I know you and I have talked about is that you've got to be able to hop step and slow down that process. You're going to probably go for a ride, but if you try and step back, you're going to lose your footing and lose your bounce. If you try and anchor in that position, you have to be incredibly strong to be able to hold off a bull rush, especially when you've already given up two hop steps. You just don't have a solid base at that point. So you've basically got to delay the inevitable there, and he does for those two hop steps. It's just long enough maybe. Um, but mm -hmm. then after that, he does try and anchor, and you see his feet slide a little bit there. And, and yeah, Griffin's right just there. overwhelmingly powerful, and he does such a good job of getting his hands inside. He knows exactly where to place him, uh, and he, again, leverage is established. Um, you can see he's the low man there. I mean, that's that's a tough rush. You When Bakhtiari's he's taking away your options like that to know you've got to win that way, and he's prepared for it. Um, so to still be able to win there is major props to Griffin. Yeah, his his effort throughout rushes, throughout snaps for Griffin, I mean, it's really impressive. That guy's motor is running nonstop mm -hmm. and, you know, paired with all his athletic gifts. And that's what I think kind of sets him over the edge because he, he does get a lot of effort sacks as well um, just because of how hard he plays. But, you know, overall, this is a win for Bakhtiari, in my opinion. Um, I would not knock Bakhtiari for this because um, Rodgers really did have a pocket here. I mean – all this space right here, he could have stepped up here. Um, he has a nice little, you know, kind of nook right there. Um, and nobody's open or he, I mean, I don't know if there's a guy over here, it mm -hmm. uh, looks like Devonte Adams. I'm not sure if nobody's open or he just decides to, you know, bolt, but him bolting, I mean, that that's on him at that point, right? you know, cause he's, he gets, you know, 15 yards behind the line of scrimmage and, you know, you, you know, you can't really expect Bakhtiari yeah. to hang on for that long so you know it's it's really good effort by Griffin you know and of course his power is on display but a, a nice job by Bakhtiari again um you know it wasn't perfect but it was definitely a I'd, I'd say a good a, a good rep for him again um yeah. Rogers and, just kind of scrambles so. and what I always tell my offensive line too is that sometimes it's not always going to be pretty like the offensive line play man, right. sometimes there are some snaps it's just about finding a way to get it done um, and on this mm -hmm. situation, Griffin is a guy who's going to, at some point in the game, he's going to get inside on you. He's going to get your chest, and you're going to have to fend that off in a timely fashion. And, you know, you're right. It's, 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 not an over, it's not as impressive as some of the other reps we have. But, you know, even those two hop steps, and eventually, you know, you're going to keep giving ground, giving ground there. Um, but that's what you got to do. you got to get those two hop steps to give Rodgers time to get it out. I think he does that. I mean, Rodgers ha has enough time here to be able to make a play. No one's open. And at that point, it becomes difficult for me to blame the offensive lineman uh, for that pressure because – I just think at that point the structure of the play has kind of been already collapsed a little bit, and it wasn't because of Griffin so much as it was because either no one's open or Rodgers didn't see didn't get the ball out. So it's hard for me to blame Bakhtiari on that one, although I'll give props to Griffin for a great rush there. Yeah, it's kind of a, you know, both sides can kind of win there in a sense. Um, but I, I do give the nod kind of to the O-lineman, even though – Griffin got a pressure in a hurry or whatever, and it's going to go against Bakhtiari maybe, you know, on pro football focus or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, <laughs> offensive line, you know, I'm sure in the offensive line room, I don't think the offensive line coach had too many complaints there. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, th this one um, is a really fun clip. Let's just let's play it, and then we'll kind of break it down. So you could see – Real quick, uh, Bakhtiari's stance is, is different. This is typically the sort of stance that he gets in um, on running plays. Um, he he kind of likes this two-point stance where his feet are a little bit more even. Um, I just think his his weight's underneath him a little bit more uh, evenly. Um, so he's, a, he's, he's just in a better position to kind of run block people. Um, but as we'll see, this isn't a run. So it's kind of... It would be interesting to study him more to see kind of if, if there is any tells, you know, right. in the film on him because um, he does switch up his stance quite a bit. And so, you know, now that we see it's play action, that, that kind of gives you, you know, what you need to know. Um, he, he's getting in a run blocking stance to sell the run, but it's play action. Right. So it makes sense. And play action – pass blocking for offensive linemen is incredibly difficult because you got to sell the run first 
So you've got to get out there and basically jump set a guy and really get into his his chest and get into his his space. And that's a real dangerous spot to be because you have no space. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, th- that's what he does here. He sells the run and then kind of recovers from there and he does a really nice job. It's such a hard technique too because you can see he jumps out at Griffin. So, you know, Griffin attacks mm-hmm. either of his edges – He's already at a disadvantage. You know, one of the great things right. about being able to kick step is that when you're in that slide and you're establishing your base, you have a step or two, you know, in most situations to get comfortable before you have to engage the defender. Now, in this one, Griffin tries an, a wide edge rush, which actually probably, you know, back to Yari, you, you can see at that point he's coming out toward, you know, toward him. So he takes an attack step almost, and Griffin recognizes that and tries to exploit his edge which is a great idea mm-hmm. because while he's coming toward you, you're going around him and trying to attack that edge. But back to yards recovery, his feet, I mean, that's that's exceptional stuff. Yeah, that's that's really impressive, man. I mean, to, to get out there, you know, in dangerous territory for an offensive lineman and then basically just mirror the guy yeah. um, really speaks to his athleticism, um, you know, footwork and efficiency and you know, it's just really, it's a really nice clip. We play it all the way through. And Griffin tries. He thinks maybe he can win that ed- edge if he goes with the one-arm one, one arm rush and uses that long-arm technique. So you can see him try and do that a little bit. The one-arm snake's out there. That second, that, that right hand is working off. And he's trying to get free to turn that corner, but he just can't do it. I mean, it's just, look at Bakhtiari's anchor there. I mean, you can see it. It's that knee bend. He's just enough to get to get enough leverage to, to lift and, and to – to keep uh, Griffin from making any more forward progress towards the quarterback, towards the pocket. I mean, it's just it's exceptional. Really work. good hand placement, too, right here. He comes underneath um, again, you know, consistently tries to get underneath. He kind of gives up his chest, like we said, and he's like, you know, that's fine. I'm just, I'm just trying to get underneath your chest now. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what he does with that right arm. I mean, that right arm is like in that armpit, and he's in control. We talked you know, about that a little bit before we went on, but it's a little bit of a risky move. You said you've seen Joe Thomas use that technique, right? So there's another similarity there. Yeah, and, and other offensive linemen, offensive tackles do it. I think, you know, a lot of veterans do it. Yeah. A lot of guys who have been playing a while, you know, they, they really have a good understanding of their their own bodies. So, you know, they they can get you know, or, or, or allow themselves to be in uncomfortable positions at times, and it doesn't really panic them, you know, and – that's kind of what we see here, um, but it really works out, you know, if you can get that hand placement on point, and it really was here for for Bakhtiari. And, and Rodgers, again, has a nice pocket. Um, Brian Robinson on the other side kind of beats uh, Beluga, but, um, but yeah, it's it's just a nice job. That that blind side is, is protected pretty well so far. Right. Yeah, he's he doesn't he has not really had much of a concern from that side at all, which is always really comforting to a quarterback. Definitely. All right. Griffin loves to use he he always is rushing from this wide technique. I mean, not only in the clips that we're showing you, but throughout the game, they love to get him outside there. I think I think they know that they from studying the Packers that they'll they'll put Bakhtiari on that island a good bit. So they're trying to take advantage and give Griffin the most space they can uh, to work in. But pretty consistently throughout tape, the Vikings or throughout their games, the Vikings like to employ Griffin in this way because he is such a great athlete with such great power. So there's so many moves available to him. Get him out in space, make that tackle, kicks it wide, and then you've got a, the opportunity to exploit him inside or out, which uh, or go through him, which Griffin's might be the best at. Right. <clears throat> yeah, you, you'll see the Vikings in an under front quite a bit. Um, kind of put the three technique over there with uh, with Griffin to allow him to get in that wide nine um, alignment, which he really excels at. So, yeah, here we go. Here's another clip. This is, uh, I believe, in the, the second half of the game, but I can't be sure. But, yeah, let's see what happens. Again, he's kind of in that run, that run stance, and you see – some kind of weird thing with Aaron Rodgers and the running back here. I wouldn't call it play action, but um, it's some sort of uh, distraction here um, or, or or something kind of funky is going on back there. So it kind of kind of makes sense for him to be in this run blocking stance again. Um, but yeah, let's see what happens. So yeah, again, he kind of steps out to him. This is a really nice job to halt the bull rush here. Um, 
And it's just because of the positioning that he's in. I mean, as soon as he makes contact, you see that back foot. And then this is where he really kind of builds his house, so to say. So he gets that contact, kind of embraces it. Um, good hand placement. And right here, it's over. You know, I mean, I, he just ends it. That hand placement is key that you talk about because if you look at Griffin's left arm, he's never really able to establish himself in that chest as he much as he there. wants to, right? That hand is yep. uh, um, Bakhtiari's hand. His right hand is kind of coming up and lifting enough of Griffin's left arm that he's not really able to get into his chest with as much power as he'd like to. He actually drives that hand up out of there, and you can see that hand for Griffin then kind of becomes useless, and Bakhtiari is the one winning chest control. So again, he brings his hands underneath. He trusts that that technique that he's mastered at this point, and it works out because he's able to kind of lift and drive Griffin's one hand out, and Griffin kind of loses the power that he has behind that bull rush at that point. Right. Yeah, that's well said. I mean, it's a really, really good technique. Again, Rodgers has, yeah. Look at that knee bend and the anchor. <laughs> that's that's a hard man to stop when he's moving at you like that. That's, that's great stuff. Yeah, really good mobility. Bakhtiari's uh, in his ankles, knees, and hips. I mean, he, he's able to match leverage with Griffin pretty much every single time. And Yeah, moving backwards and catching a guy moving forward is, is always difficult, let alone – somebody as uh, talented as Griffin. So it's, it's, it's pretty impressive stuff. So yeah, this one, you know, we had to throw in here, you know, so Griffin's been kind of getting, you know, stunted and halted, you know, for the most part, you know, up until this point in the game, this is later in the game. Um, but here we'll, we'll see what happens when just one little false step can can really, you know, just ruin the entire play for an offensive lineman. And it's really something um, that I try to look at when I'm evaluating guys. Because he Bakhtiari doesn't fall step often, but if you do fall step against a guy like Griffin, you can stop him the whole game and then just one little mistake and we'll, we'll kind of see what happens here. So, uh, oops, yeah, so... Got a sack there, and I'll, I'll kind of point out um, what I was talking about. Griffin's get off there is really ridiculous too. So if there was ever a time to take a bad step and take, take that little hitch, it's not here. And because Griffin really flies, I mean, look at him moving yeah. off the ball. I mean, that edge he yeah, wants that, it. <laughs> that's a fantastic jump. Yeah, man. That so he gets out this. So his second step with his left foot. I'll also point this out, but look who the first two players moving off the ball are. <laughs> Those two. They're, they're playing their the own game. Moves. <laughs> yeah. They're just it's it's it, two premier athletes at their position going at it. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. So this step right here, it's it's a little bit upfield. Um and you could see he doesn't really have half man leverage right here. And so right now he's in a position where he has to recover and the rusher is dictating things now and not him. And you never want that to happen as an offensive line maybe because pretty much 10 times out of 10, this guy's a better athlete than you. So if he's dictating things, you're going to lose. So right here, because he loses that leverage, look at his feet. That right there is a position you never want to be in. He has to cross his feet and Griffin, you know, paired with Griffin's get off, and his power and his leverage and his speed to power right here around the corner is just too much for him to handle. And this is interesting too because that one little slight hitch where he's trying to establish that half-man relationship and he doesn't get there and you can see it here, even from this angle, you can't see it as clearly probably as you could if this angle were tilted a little bit more behind Bakhtiari. You could see that, but for Griffin to recognize that this is that this angle, this little tiny mistake that he made is giving me the edge at this opportunity. Goes this may be kill. my only opportunity to win the edge all game against this guy. Um, it's just such an impressive recognition skill for him in that one step he gets off the line to see that and to be able to exploit it right away and attack Bakhtiari's outside shoulder because there the difference in this one is that they're just not Bakhtiari can't get square with him like he has in the past. And so right. he doesn't quite have the same leverage, like you said. 
Griffin's obviously able to get lower at the point of attack and from there be able to kind of drive through back to Yari and, and get all the way to Rogers. Yeah. And uh, Josh sitting the replacement. This is kind of cool. I love this technique. Watch the left guard right here. This is fun. Tyron Smith loves this. Yank him down, bury him. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So the one time, you know, he, that's a really, really nice job by the left guard. But, but yeah, so, you know, Griffin's ability to turn the corner and, and his his mobility and his flexibility around the corner, uh, you know, for a big guy is, is really on display here, and it's impressive. Bakhtiari's so good out of his stance. This wasn't a game where you got to see Griffin's bend a whole lot because he didn't try to win the edge a whole lot. And here he kind of converts speed to power more than anything uh, to bull through him. So you don't see a ton of great bend. You see a little bit there as he gets around that corner. But hopefully in another situation in a year, we can kind of demonstrate that bend a little bit because Bakhtiari, like I said, was so explosive to the edge. He didn't try to win that way a whole lot throughout the game, as you've even seen in these clips. Um, but there will be opportunities where you're like, wow, a 275-pound man like Griffin can bend that way. You know, it's pretty – it's not Von Miller stuff, but it's definitely pretty pretty uh, exceptional for his height and weight. And so – but here you just see – I think his best quality is that, like we talked about at the outset, and it's that speed to power um, and the ability to recognize where the weak points are in an, in an offensive lineman and attack them, uh, not waste any time or motion. That's my favorite thing about Griffin is that – there's not a lot of wasted time or motion. You know, he knows he can right. think on his feet. He knows what move to employ, and he goes right for it. Um, and you know, and then we saw it with the spin move. He know he knew it was available there, and he said, "Listen, this move's available. I'm taking it. And if you stop me, you stop me. That's it." And Bakhtiari did then. Um, but it was still a smart move to use in that situation. You consistently see him use a, a good move, and it's not always going to work out as a pass rusher. But uh, it's just he always is thinking about what the best move to employ is in any given situation. And just that right, that right there gives him a mental advantage over most offensive tackles. Uh, Bakhtiari might be the exception, though. Right. And, you know, I think if if you are going to look at any sort of bend here, if you look just right where his pants and his jersey meet at his hips, that's kind of where it's just impressive, you know, because he's turning the corner um, with pretty good bend in his hips. You know, maybe not in the ankles, you don't see a whole lot, but either way, I mean, you know, that that's a really sharp turn. And to be um, able to run that flat line while a guy is trying to push you upfield. <laughs> right. You're like leaning into a guy, right. lean, like kind of bending laterally at the hip and just running. And it's, yeah, that's tough. I mean, back to Ari, he may not be square with him, but he's still got a good amount of, of contact and a good amount of surface there right. connecting him to Griffin there. And Griffin just runs right through it and, and really keeps his line pretty flat all the way to Rogers. I mean, if you look at that yard line stripe even there, I think he's about a yard or two back from it, and he just kind of mm -hmm. runs straight through it. It's it's just really good yeah. stuff. Yeah, man. So that was that was good. Yeah, it's a fun matchup between two guys who are premier players at their position, I think, and uh, and it, we'll see more from both of them, I'm sure, throughout the season. This is something we Brandon and I hope to do. You know, this was fun, and we hope to just be able to talk about some of these matchups that we see. We'll cut a couple plays for you guys, go through them, and. Uh, show you some techniques and different things that different players use and hopefully get you more familiar with strengths and weaknesses of various players and why we like or dislike guys and you know this situation maybe a couple guys that are a little under the radar and so on and so forth so yeah thanks for listening on this uh, special edition under the microscope video edition and hopefully we'll be able to do it again soon